have not yet seen because we are so concerned about the time in which we, we create, the time in which we shape, the time in which we make. But Lord, we tell you right now, Lord, we have no time without you giving us time. So we thank you, Lord, because in that time we find your grace. In that time we find your mercy. In that time we find your love like no place else. We thank you right now for being God and God all by yourself. As the church asks the question all the time. God. All the time. God. All the time. God. God. And what I really want to know is God is God. All the time. Praise the Lord in your time, Lord. We shall find honor from this day forward like never before. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. And we thank God for each and every one of you that are here today. Amen. We thank God for you pressing your way through whatever season that you might be in in your life. Uh, we are in a season of Christmas, but each and every one of you, there should be something in you that is born today that you didn't know you had yesterday. Come on, somebody. There should be, some, there should be something born in you today that you didn't know you had yesterday. Before I go another further, I want to thank God for our pastor, Pastor Felicia Moore. Amen. I want to thank God for our elect lady Helen. Amen. But above all, I want to thank God for all of you this morning who counted and not robbed to join us. Amen. And we could not do this if we didn't if we forget the reason that we were here, and that is Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we want to thank God for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Are you the spotlight? Yeah, spotlight, spotlight. Now I wonder why I got all my troubles going on because I have put myself in the spotlight. You have put yourself in the spotlight. You, you, you don't even realize why your troubles seem to have intensified because you have been, you, 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 you won't just accept the light. You got to have the spot of the light. Come on, somebody. And you just won't follow the light. You got to spot the light and ignore the light. Come on, somebody. And I'm talking about the spotlight this morning. My God, my God. The spotlight. I, I, you know, she, ever, I, ever since she was a spiritual little girl, I always said, because I got three points. I've been the points I got back to these three. three points this morning. Okay. Amen. But our focus is on the spotlight. And, and, and the problem is, as we talked about briefly yesterday, is we're so focused on the light that we won't let God. He, he never said, there be light. My God. He said, let. Come on, somebody. Let there be light. Come on, somebody. Um, I'm, I'm coming from the book of 1 John. 1 John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. 1 uh -huh. John 1, 5 through 10. Um, um, I want to thank God for uh, Mason being in the house today. Yay! Hello, Mason. Mason. Hello, Mason. Thank God for Mason being in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. And look. The Mason Maurice, absolutely. That's right. That's going to be his Christian name. Amen. Amen. They, they, they named some people Bishop Maurice. They named some people Bishop Robinson. But now we got a Mason Maurice in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, if you have your Bible, if you're there, say amen. Amen. We want to pray for Mother Dan and Mother Daniels. Thank you, Mother, for saying you, you just will not let me let you go. Hello, somebody. One day for Mother Jones this morning, uh, missionary, um, uh, missionary uh, um, Irma, um, um, in her absence, and, 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 and Mother Mary. I just said Mother Mary Lee. Missionary one ten, and, and, and y'all know our, our LA connection. Now everybody got to have, have an LA connection. Sister Geraldine, come on, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Keep them all in prayer as they are in a season of being isolated, not, not because of uh, uh, Corona, but being isolated to be with God. Hello, somebody. See, I don't look at the negative. I look at the positive. Come on, somebody. God said, I quarantine you because you need some time with me. Hello, hello. All right. Spotlight. Script reading coming from the book of, um, coming from the book of 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. The word of God reads. This is the message we heard from Jesus. And now, declare to you, God is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. So we're lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We're not participating, we're not practicing the truth. Uh -huh. 
But if we are living in the light as God is the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us, somebody say, from all sin. All sin. From all sin. If somebody say, oh, that's why I miss mother. Mother would take it and say it and keep going with it. Everybody say, from all sin. From all sin. He cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. Uh -huh. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Somebody say, all wickedness. All wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we're... We are calling God a liar uh -huh. and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. My Lord. So as we hear this, we don't, I'm only seeing darkness, I'm only seeing corona rather than being quarantined from God because I don't see God. I have been quarantined for God uh -huh. because of corona. My God. corona. Everything works on behalf of Hello, somebody. So if God has put me aside where I can't fellowship or talk, uh, isolated me, it is for his purpose. Come on, somebody. And so now as I hear this, he said, this is the message we heard from Jesus. No matter what you go through, God is still God. Uh -huh. No matter what you don't have, God is still God. Yeah. No matter what you want that you can't get, God is God. God. Yeah. So as we hear this, he said, there is no darkness, and there is no darkness in him at all. So if, if there is no darkness in him, the darkness must be reflecting off me. Yes, come on now. And if it's reflecting off me, that means God is taking a back seat, and I call on him to drive when I can't get through the storm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I, I don't need I don't need a, a storm driver. I need a light driver. Yeah. I don't need yeah. a storm driver. I need a spirit driver. Yeah. I don't need a part-time driver. I need an all-the-time yeah. driver. Yeah. I don't need a, a driver that's going to drive when I can't handle the spotlight. Come on, Bishop. A lot of us get in, the, get in the place where we put ourselves in the spotlight and, and then we, we get in that spot and, and we can't handle the light that's going to deliver us to the spot because we're so focused on being the spot, we ignore the light. Come on, somebody. So we got three points here. And our first point in this spotlight sermon is you. Most times I, I would have thought I would have said I or me. But it begins with you. Because you says your, your only, your only under, your only under, you only under, you only understand you. You only understand you. So the problem is. When I look at you, I have an understanding of you because I don't like the understanding of me. Amen. You, you only understand you, why? You, oh, only uh -huh. understand you. You're leaning on only your understanding. Uh -huh. You don't really want to understand what nobody else is saying. And, and when somebody says something contrary to what I want to understand, I got a problem with them. So, so, so now, that's why most times I'm frustrated. Because you, you, you're not lining up with my understanding. And see, if I, if I have an understanding, Deacon Joe, uh, that, mean, that means that there's a multiple understanding going on here because cause I came out of the understanding of an understanding to, to now try to create my own understanding. Don't ask me to say that again. I came out of an understanding uh, that, that created the understanding that, and now I'm trying to uh, overrule that understanding. I didn't say exactly that, but I'm on the same path. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, what I need to understand is that that, that, that without the one that uh, uh, was a, I was a thought of. Mm -hmm. See, in order to be a thought, that means God understood where I was when he thought of me. God understood where I was going to be when he thought of me. God understood where I was going to end up when he thought of me because I was his thought. And if I ended up being a thought that could never be with the one who thought me up, what would that take? What would that make up? So what I'm trying to get you to understand is the problem that, that begins all problems is you. 
and, and you was the only one where I could be talking about you at the same time I could be the you. Come on, somebody. And, and, and this is what I like about the word you because when I talk about you, I, I'm disguising myself, uh, but the you is really me. Uh-huh. And, and so now when I, when I hear this, uh, it means when I, when I get all these understandings going on, I'm not leaning on the understanding that I came from. And when I'm not leaning on the understanding that I came from, I'm not going to always see the light because the, the light is there, but I won't let it be. Come on, somebody, let it be. I won't let the light be. I will not just let God. Oh, God. The darker it is, the more beautiful and appreciative you are of the light. Now, how do you say that? It's more beautiful and appreciative. They don't go together. That's the problem. You want beauty without appreciation. You want beauty without appreciation. You want love without having to appreciate the one you love. And, and, and as we talked about in our class this morning, when we get to that place, we're talking about we're not valuing the time that God gave us in this thing called life. So as I hear this, if I have darkness in my life, it's because I'm ignoring the light. Let, God say, let there be light. Let me in your life. There is no darkness in God. There is no darkness in my, You know, it's all right to be sad, Pastor. It's all right to get mad. But it's a terrible thing when you have the avail to the light to live in your sadness. It's a terrible thing when you have the avail to your, your, the light to live in your madness, your sadness, and, and then live in your sickness. Because you don't realize that God sent Jesus so you don't have to claim sickness. Because all you got to do is attach yourself to him because he said, I took on all your sickness when they beat you with those stripes. And every strike declared that you were healed. Every strike. Every strike that Jesus took. He took one for diabetes. He took one for cancer. But I take I take it even better than that. He took one for the sickness called Maurice Robinson. He took a strike for your sickness. And your sickness comes from Y-O-U. Your own understanding. That's where your sickness comes from. That's what declares how long you will live in your sickness. Your own understanding is, it, it, it has already dug your grave. How do you live? How do you live? Don't you know your earth? And if you're not living outside the earth, bitch, Pastor, you're living inside the earth. And if you're living inside the earth, that means you're already in your grave. All because of your own understanding. I know there's a light. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. Somebody turn the light off. Turn the light off. Please. Turn the light off. I know there's a light. I know there's a light. And here I'm trying to read in the dark. I know there's a light. And I'm trying to live this thing out in the dark. I know there's a light. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell y'all what I see, but I can't see because I'm, I'm living in a dark place. I'm living in the earth, all because of your own understanding. Trying to read in the dark, trying to figure things out that you don't even know what they are. That means you are in the what? God. Let the light work for you. But the problem is. You can't let the work, light, light work for you because you're not trying to let God be the light. You're trying to be the spotlight. And see, when you're trying to be the spotlight, this is, the, this is, this is why people don't come to church. Turn, turn the light back on. Because I want them, I want them to, I want them to um, make sure they, they, they realize that they are not the spotlight. Because when that light was on, off, ain't nobody make the paper readable for me. And, 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 and this is the part that gets me. Y'all think that light on because of LPNL. But I, I, I saw God put LPNL, LPNL out of business after uh, Katrina. I saw God put LPNL out of business after Andrew. I, I, I saw God put LPNL out of, out of business when he wanted them to be out of business. But what light you can't turn out 
is the light of God. But the problem is, you, 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 the reason you don't realize you can't turn it out because you ain't never let him turn it on. Come on, somebody. You got to let God. I am concerned about my bills because I'm, I'm ignoring his will. Come on, somebody. It, it, it's concerned about my bills because I'm ignoring what I've been taught. Concerned about my bills because I'm ignoring his will. His will is where I find a light that cannot be extinguished. Come on, somebody. So my problem is you only understanding your own understanding. Your own understanding is the problem. When I'm leaning on my own understanding, I raise my hand while Bishop is preaching. Like Bishop gonna call on me, Deacon Terry. And your own understanding, God's understanding, should tell you I'm not gonna call on you while I'm preaching. Mm -hmm. So put your hand down. That's what I'm talking about. We want to step outside of the light. We want to step outside the order of God. And I know, Brother Terry, one thing about you, you have humbled yourself, and right now you're not seeking the spotlight, but you have something on your mind that you want to say. But God said it is not the time to say it. Come on, we talked about time this morning. Amen. So listen to what he says. So we are lying and we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. Now there's no, there's no light, there's no darkness in God. So if I'm worrying, if I'm, if I'm wavering in my faith, if I'm worried about my finances, if I think i got to control my children's life, that means the problem no longer is you, it's me. Point two. And point two is me. Me means my essentials. My essentials. You're not taking care of God. i got to take care of myself because you're not taking care of what I need. You're not taking care of my essentials. I got a problem right now. Because God, I, I, need, I needed some money. Um, I needed, I needed a little bit more money to get all my kids and grandkids what they needed for Christmas. And, and, and that was essential to me. Me. But see, why I put you before me, if I was not leaning on my own understanding, I wouldn't be concerned about me. Because then, when I'm concerned about me, I understand what the Bible said, no good thing dwelleth in me. Because when I'm thinking about me, that means, and I'm not thinking about God, I'm thinking about the flesh, and I'm not thinking about the spirit, and what's really is the, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the giver and, and the sustainer of my life. Amen. When I think about me, I'm thinking about the flesh. And he says it clearly. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. It ain't, it ain't the dark things you do, it's the dark way you think. A whole lot of people are in dark places, but they don't think dark. I was in prison, but 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 what? I I I, I praised the Lord. I taught Bible study. I, I cried when I left prison. Who does that? Because I found a light like I never found it in a place that people expect to find only darkness. Who does that? It was not where I was that defined me. It was what I, the way I was thinking before I went there that made me think I was dark. You serving God, but you you worry. Dark. You serving God, but you, you, you your faith is wavering. Dark. Mm -hmm. Darkness in God. The evidence of darkness. When was the last day you had a day without complaining about something? Money. Bills. I can't. When you say I can't, that means you're complaining to God telling you you can't because your creator can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry, it's about me. It's about me. There's a place we must go, saints. There's a place we must go. But before I can make it about me and you, before I can, I can do anything for my family, before I can do anything for the church, before I can do anything for, 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 for my pastor, I got I, 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 I to gotta do everything for God. Everything. everything. And, 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 and so, if I want to do everything for God, I got to know that he's an on-time God. And we say God's God all the time. Did we say that? So if God is God all the time, 
the place where I am with God with no interference all the time is church. I don't want to be devoted to God. Because being devoted to God takes some of me out of the equation. Being devoted to God takes my own understanding out of the equation. Being devoted to God takes my choices out of the equation. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the flesh got to have some say-so. The flesh got to have some say-so. Because the flesh has one job. To mess up. To mess up what really belongs to God. And the way he messes it up is make us think that God is mad at us. I, I, I will say there was a season in this thing called life on earth where God was mad. I will say that. I will say, I, you, you, know, you know how, you know how uh, my wife, when, 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 when she gets a little angry, she talks to me. But she talks from afar. Y'all better hear the word of God. She talks to me, but she talks from afar. Can anybody hear me? So what do you mean she talks? She's sitting right there, Bishop. But she talks from afar. She talks disconnected. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. So when Jesus was talking from the cloud, when God was talking from the clouds, he was talking from afar. Yeah. He was connected, but yet making them feel like he was disconnected because he was not with them. But see, he said, when I come back, I'm not. I'm going to let you know I'm with you because I'm going to abide in you. We, when I abide, I cannot be disconnected. And he said, I will never, from this point on, I will never leave you or not forsake you. I will never, you will never be without me. And no, 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 no. I don't know if I will never be without you because I can be without you if you don't let me shine the light. Come on. All right now. If you don't let the light work, that means you're going to make yourself a spotlight. I'm going to tell you something. People in the world, Bishop, they, it's people in the world, Lord. They, 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 they got stuff, they, they, they get blessed, and, and, and they got stuff that I can't get. And they don't even come to church because they're, they're not trying to be the spotlight. They're trying to be who they are, professed sinners. Jesus. They're trying to be what they are. My God. You become a spotlight when you, when you become a part-time church goer. You better hear the word of God. Because the devil knows if he don't mess with you, he don't fool with you, you become a, you become a full time servant of the Lord. So you put a spotlight on you when you get when you become lukewarm. I'm going to church, but I still want to live worldly. Spotlight. Devil will whoop you. First, what he gonna do before he whoop you? He gonna set you up, put you way up here, and God gonna let you. Because all of a sudden, you want to shine. And he going to let you shine. But then you know what he's going to do, Pastor? Huh? Because one thing, what the devil does, it does not last. So even if he wanted to put you on a pedestal that, and forever, he can't because he is not forever. You better hear the word of God. So when he puts you on this pedestal, he's putting you up there because he knows you cannot stay there without you made yourself a target. It's is 2022. I hope you have learned enough about God to let the light work. Stop trying to live worldly. Come into church. Because what's happening is you're being hit with things that you're going to be hit with anyway, but because you made yourself a spotlight, you don't even see God because of the spot that what they said that log that you have put in your eye because you want to be seen. Uh huh. Anybody, anybody relating to anything I'm saying right now? Amen. Huh? Just come to church. You want God to take care of your problem all the time? Serve Him what? All the time. You ain't got ain't nothing you can do for God but surrender yourself. And the evidence of surrendering yourself, if you got a church that requires you to be there three days a week, surrender. So I'm gonna practice with y'all. Maybe three days is too much, Pastor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna do once, we're gonna do once a week for about three or four weeks. Once a week. And then y'all gonna really be mad. Because I'm only preparing you for God's life. Somebody said God's life. And when I'm being prepared for God's life, I'm getting ready to come out of the spotlight. Hear the word of God. See, because what's gonna happen after we come to church once a week? About three or four weeks. Anybody know what God get ready to do? He said, nah. 
you you said I can do this. I can see I can see I can see Gene in church every Sunday. Once a week, Bishop, I can do that. I can see Gene in church every Sunday. I can see this new this new lady who who who, who, who been. Y'all ain't gonna have to. I, I live right on the street. Don't you live right on the street? She gonna say I can do that. I I, I can see this Joe who come anyway. I, I can do that, but then you know what God's going to do after them three or four weeks? He's going to sit down on seven days in a row. Amen. I'm going to show you whether you were real or not. See, we operate in God when we operate in things we cannot do. We operate in God when we operate in things we cannot do. You ain't working. And you want to stand with God, and you want to let the life run your life, take your vacation. Fake with God for three or four weeks. Come to church every Sunday. And then when I put the seven on you, I ain't doing it for, I'm not doing it to make you feel guilty. I'm doing it so when the troubles that are going to come your way in 2022, I'm going to let you know why you can't handle it. Because you won't receive God all the time. When on the spotlight, guess what? I have been elevated for a fall. Mm. See, if I don't serve God all the time, if I don't walk through those doors that he assigned me to the church all the time, now, now, when I am in trouble, guess what happens, saints? Huh? I begin to wonder if I did make God man. Hello. I begin to wonder if God is there for me. But when I begin, when I begin to serve him all the time, there's no question that even here God is with me. Come on, somebody. Even here, he, is, he, he, he shall be faithful. Even here. I don't want your money. I don't even want, want I don't even want what belongs to God, and that is time. Lisa, you're trying to get take up my baby. That is not my time. I didn't give it to you. The only reason you can even say the word time is because God gave you, he breathed life into your, into your body. Amen. So now, so the next problem is God don't take care of my essentials. Look at Pastor. Look at that girl. That's a beautiful lady. Glory God. I mean, she got, she got all the credentials. Hmm? All the credentials. Why God? Just won't give her a good man. God says, I'm going to show all you men that she is a good woman. And she will take care of a good man. And how did, how did he show us that? Anybody know how he showed us that Pastor Lisa would take care of a good man? Because she done took care of some bad ones. <laughs> you better wake up! You know she'll take care of good man by the way she took care of her. Hear the word of God. She my daughter. Boy, look at him. I do a Tyson so I know her digits. <laughs> I promise you, with it, the way I saw her take care of them bad men, boy, if I wasn't straight, I'd get straight for that. Hey, all y'all, all y'all, all y'all on Facebook, don't be sending your resumes to 1701 North with a place. <laughs> Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But what she had to do, I had to teach her how not to lord over the saints. Because when she was lording over the saints unaware, she was lording over that bad man. Lording over is lording over. Amen. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. So there's still, even though she was taking care of the bad man, there was still work God had to do. Even though I might not be perfect, that I, I look might look perfect to you, God is still working on me. Anybody hearing this? Yes, sir. He's work, He's working on you through me. In other words, he's working on how I understand you. Through me, and the way he works on me, by the way I understand you, is I stop lying to me about me. Can you 
too close because she, she, she might wake up and sneeze. Baby. Anybody hear what I just said? He works on you through me by humbling me and accepting you. Now you become better because God worked on me. Amen. And when God works on me and I let the light, then it, then it become us. Y'all trust, y'all run around here trying to marry people who don't trust God. Y'all run around here trying to marry people and trust people who don't trust God. Baby, if they ain't walking with God, they ain't gonna walk with, walk with you for a little while. Look. If they ain't walking with God, they're only gonna walk with you a little while because the only things that are eternal are things that are connected to the eternal one. I want you to love me. Yeah, I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. Until the next flavor of the week. I'm going to love you. Till one come down that's hunkier or uh, uh, richer than you. I'm going to love you. you got to find one that is connected to God. The us. Until there's an us with God. My point three, us. Anybody hear this? Point three, us. Anybody hear this? Point three, us. Anybody know what us is? We've been talking about understanding, right? Understanding salvation. How can I understand salvation until I, under, until I connect myself to the one who saved me? I'm trying to connect myself to you. Oh, I just need a good man and he'll complete me. To grow out of the seed of man to grow into the spirit of God. When you grow into the spirit of God, there is no, this is so good, there is no casualties of, of war. I had to do that. You had to suffer. When Jesus died on the cross, one time I said, well, everybody that came that didn't want him crucified and loved him, God said, I I did the same for those who wanted him crucified as the ones who didn't want them crucified. They were rewarded with eternal life. They were rewarded with life without sin. If they really believe that I'm the reason he lived on the other side of death. I'm the reason he, he, he spoke. I'm the reason he showed up without opening the door. I'm the reason that, that, he, that he fed Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? I'm the reason that Jesus came back and over 500 saw him being ascended into heaven. I'm the reason God is. Come on. But I'll never get there until I'm able to spot the light rather than being trying to be the spotlight. Mm -hmm. I'll never get there until I can spot the light in Deacon Joe. I'll never get there until I can spot the light in Sister Marjorie. I'll never get there until I can spot the light in KK. And the reason I can't spot the light in them is because I want to be the spotlight. So now, as I said earlier in Lessons of the Heart, so even when God sends you to hell because you didn't know how to spot the light, while you're here on earth. And that's something. God said, even when I get ready to cast you in the hell, if you, if, you, if you spot the light, you still won't have to go. And how do I not spot the light, Carol? I'll say, I'm going to hell. Look what I did. I didn't do this right. I didn't do that right. But I'm sitting here with God. And God is the one casting me in the hell. But I'm still saying, I didn't live right. Spotlight still on me. I didn't treat Pastor Nisa right. Spotlight still on me. God said, all you had to say was, God, you are the one putting me in hell. And when I realized that God is the one that put me in hell, I realized he's the one put me on earth. When I realized he's the one put me on earth, I realized he put me in that uncomfortable situation. When I realized he put me in that uncomfortable situation, I realized he put me with the women that were not my, my real. When I realized... That God did it all. Uh -huh. Now I'm able to spot the light. Yes. No longer concerning about being the spotlight. Mm -hmm. See, when you are not when you are not the spotlight and you spot the light, that means you recognize that God is with you, and Satan can't fake to be God. Yes. As long as I don't spot the light, 
Satan will come with his toys and, 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 and his hosts and, and, he, and he, will, he will make me think I did something and only God can make me think to hurt me. Wake up. Step out of religion. Religion says, who got a body? Religion says, I got to be the spotlight. Religion says I got to be spotlight. Religion says I. How do I make myself the spotlight? Always do it right. Even when I don't do right, I can't be spotted in my wrong. And the way I'm not spotted in my wrong is I lie about my wrong. And I like my wrong was right. As long as I'm looking at trying to protect my spot, I'll never see the spot that I need to recognize. I'll never spot the light. Because I'm, I'm trying to look like the right spot. You are spot. Because you're in the flesh. And the flesh taints the spirit as long as it long as the, the long, long as the flesh is making the spirit subjected to it. Anybody hear what I just said? The flesh taints the spirit as long as the flesh convinces the spirit that it is subjected to the spirit. But there is no spot in your heart. There's no spot in your peace. There's no spot in your joy. When you realize this flesh is only doing what it's supposed to do, but I am, I am going to let God make me right in the way I think like him. My bills don't overwhelm me. My circumstances don't overwhelm me. There's some things that God put in your life that people can't pray you out of. There's some things that God put in your life that you can't get off of you. Uh, there's some things God said only come through fasting and praying. When I heard that, I thought it was talking about turning down my plate. But what it was saying, attaching yourself to God and only God, and that, that's the only way it's going to lead. My God, come on. And in order to attach yourself to God, you've got to be able to recognize. Can you spot the light? You can't spot the light. You're, you're, you're the spot that's in the way of you getting to the light. Anybody hear me today? Come on, Come on. How do, now, I, I, Bishop, you, 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 you're you good at telling me what I'm not, but how do I get there? The Bible says there's some things man can't explain. He said no man can tell you where the wind comes from or where the wind is going. That's what Paul said. I can't tell you how to get rid of your spot, but I can tell you won't, what won't hurt is that you be an all-timer for who? Oh. I tell you what won't hurt is that you becoming an all-timer for God. Yes. I'm not going to be able to stand up here and be a hypocrite. Well, what you got to do is come to church, and when you come to church, you got to come to the altar every day before, before the church people come in. And, and I, I've done all of that, Pastor. I've done everything man told me. And them drugs kept knocking my head over. Because mm, mm. I was coming to church trying to get a plan from man. Uh -huh. Instead of coming to church for one reason. Not to get a plan, but God, how do I operate in your plan? Yes, right. Not to get a plan. But God, how do I operate in your plan? Jesus said, Jesus said, I don't want you to take them out of the out of this world where the evil one is. He said, I want you to help them. I want you to cover them while they go through it. Mm -hmm. See, man going to cast it out of you. Hear that now? You heard that? I cast this demon out of you. For how long? <laughs> man going to cast it out of you. How can man cast out what he didn't put in you? There's some sin that they say all oh, you get out of are fasting and praying. Nah, religion taught me. Then when you get out today, you go to Pastor Nisa's house, don't eat that ham. First of all, it's pork. <laughs> and, the, and that microwave and cheese, just turn your plate down today, Bishop. Okay, the wonderful thing. 
Because while I'm turning my plate down, my abundance ain't bothering me. But at some time, I got to eat again. And all my abundance is going to do is wait. He's just going to wait. He's just going to wait. Because yeah. I know your, I know your flesh. See, see, if you really couldn't get rid of something, and you really wanted it, you tell God, you know what, God? I'm not, I'm not going to fast. I'm not going to fast. If turning my plate down and get me down, I'm not going to eat till I die. Y'all hear what I just said? I'm not going to eat till I die. Did y'all hear what I just said? And when you make a statement like that, God said you can eat right now because you've already died because you were willing to. He said you can eat right now because you already died because your desire was to please me if it, even if it led to death. Wake up, people. You're on the time of God. Church starts at 10 o'clock. Guess who gave you the opportunity to be here at 10 o'clock? Me? Huh? Why can't I get my week right? Because I missed the time that I was supposed to be there, not to get the word, but to feel his presence. It wasn't the word of God that Jesus gave us a Calvary. It was the mighty presence of God. So I might, you might walk in the church at 10 o'clock, bishop might not be here, pastor might not be here, but guess who's going to be here? And his presence. I know one thing, I saw a beautiful thing the other night. I was on the camera last, last Sunday night as I leave. Last Sunday night I saw a beautiful thing. I should have had Christmas service last Sunday night. Because I had a whole bunch of people right there not walking all over each other collecting toys. But you wouldn't come yesterday to collect God. So y'all know what Bishop's doing next year, right? I already told Pastor. What Bishop gonna do next year? Y'all gonna get the toys on Christmas morning. When the, when the babies won't have them on the tree, I gave you a chance to put them on the tree and come serve God, but you wouldn't do it. So since you won't come from God, you will come from the toys, I'm gonna use the toys to get you to God. Amen. Are we talking about anything? They were running, they were about to walk, knock each other over. I'm on the camera, look at them. They all, all got so bad back there, they had to come out here and do something. People there were. I say, I say, my goodness. Look at their God today. Because why? They want to be the spotlight for their children. They want to be the spotlight for their grandchildren. They want to be the spotlight for their friends. But they couldn't spot the light, even though they were getting them in church. They, they couldn't even spot the light. If they had spotted the light, there was no way they wouldn't have been here on Christmas Day to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Wouldn't you want somebody to come celebrate your birthday? Come on, come on. Are we talking about anything? Amen. Spotlight. Church starts at 9 o'clock. Unless a little hot start at 9 o'clock. It's going to start at 9 o'clock. Church start at 10 o'clock. It's going to start at 10 o'clock. Because you know what? I am, I'm tired of missing what God has for me. Waiting on y'all. And I don't want you to miss what God has for you. Waiting on me. So if I'm here or not, guess what? 10 o'clock, you're going to be here. Am I right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. One thing I like about y'all, now at least y'all don't stop lying. I said, you're going to be here. You don't know, none of them ain't saying nothing. They know I'm saying, yeah! I will be here today. Monday, Monday, I'll be here tomorrow. At least y'all don't lie no more. Spot the light, saints. Stop trying to be the spotlight. It says, there is no darkness in God. You don't have to worry about whether you are faithful or unfaithful, if you just come, be an all-time servant of God, and you cannot be an all-time servant of God, not answer his call by coming to church all the time. Stop fooling yourself. I got somebody who'll never come to this church no more because one of the requirements, especially 2022, is going to be here all the time. 
If you got a position in this church and you get paid and you ain't here all the time, you ain't get paid no more. They go for pastor, they go for me, they go for anybody. You got a position in this church and you, and you don't want the, and you tell God you don't want the position because that position as a deacon, that position as an ordained, that position as a minister requires you being here all the time. You just, you ain't you ain't walking away from me. You just told God I don't want to be a minister, I don't want to be a deacon, I don't want to be a missionary, I don't want to be a pastor, I don't want to. See what I'm saying? It ain't you ain't walking, you ain't getting nothing. You just told God what you don't want. And I got to stop bucking God by trying to press you to be where you don't want to be. Amen. Yeah, come on I'm bucking God. Mm. I'm out of the order of God. Trying to save you for you. Help me save you. No more. If you don't want to be saved, I can't do nothing for you. I'm not Jesus. That's right. You ain't now, Calvary. I'm not Jesus. Are we talking about anything? Amen. Spot the light. I ain't got much. I ain't. I know. Look, I'm on the other side of fifty. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I got less time than more time to be here. And I, I, I ain't got no more to throw away. Wait till you to spot the light. I give you everything I got. I come down. I preach my my heart out. But beg you to save yourself. That ain't in me no more. I never saw Jesus beg nobody to come to God. Never saw Jesus. And I'm growing. Because I declared I want to be like Jesus. I want to be on God's time all the time and I want to be all the time on God's time. Hello, somebody. And if I get there, guess what? And you follow me. You'll be on God's time all the time and all the time on God's time. Are we talking about anything? Mm-hmm. Come on. Spotlight. So now what I'm trying to say to you, for us to get there, it can't be about you. It can't be about me. It's got to be about me and God. And then I always make it about me and you. So when you put me and you together, that's, that's us. But most times when you talk about me, I don't care about you. And when I'm talking about you, you don't care about me. But when you put me and you together, it's a full-time us. And I have been put there by who? God and God alone. Everybody blessed today? Amen. Spotlight. 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 God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God for that word. Amen. Give me honor to Christ for that word. Amen. 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 Come on. I'll hear you in this place today. That was a mighty, mighty word. Because I'm telling you, I, I, I think about all the times when, when I allow myself to be the spotlight and put God on the back burner and how did I fall and all the trouble that I caused in my life and all the things I didn't have to go through only because I wanted the attention or I wanted the accolades or I wanted the praise and I put God on the back burner and the things I had to suffer because I wanted the spotlight. My God, we got to put God in his rightful place. Amen. And that word right there should put us, uh, allow us and teach us to do so. Stand to your feet, amen. We're going to go ahead and we're going to want you all to just, just go ahead and um, stand with me. And we're going to pray a covering over our bishop, praise God. Heavenly Father, we just bless you for that word today. We thank you that you use your son mightily to deliver a word to us, to help us, God. To help us be with you, Lord God. To let us Submit to you, Lord God, in your will and your way that we must diminish the flesh and let the spirit man rise up and have his rightful place with you, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for Bishop Robinson and his dedication and his commitment over the years to you, Lord God, and to this ministry, praise God. And that and with all of that, he's still yet committed to us. And we just thank you, God, that you continue to let him continue to love us, Lord God, and that he has not given up on us. Even though we flawed and fought with all these faults, Lord God, you continue to still let him be dedicated to you and serving you and love us, Lord God. So we thank you and keep that hedge of protection around him and his wife, amen. Continue to let them come subject to your will and your way and let their footsteps be led by by you. We honor you in all things. In Jesus' holy name we pray, everybody say amen. 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 We just bless God for the word today. What a